Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this wonderful little branching pattern. I did make this in my art journal for the 100 day project. So as you can see, I did it back in March. And I would like to show you how this branching pattern here, this is actually kind of the easy part, is these larger branches in the foreground. But it's the ones in the back that are going to take up a little bit more of our time here. So before we get started, I would like to let you know that it might be easier that maybe the first or second time that you do this, that you make an enclosure for yourself. So right here, I made a circle. Maybe you can make a small box or just a, a small shape to do this in because I definitely overwhelmed myself when I did this the first time because I did a full page spread and it just took a lot out of me that day because it was during the 100 day project. I only had that evening to work on it and so I was pretty overwhelmed kind of doing this much detail in just one night. So I think it would have been really nice if I'd had the chance to kind of work on this for several days maybe and just really enjoy the process. So I think that if I have a chance I'll come back to this and add a little more detail. So how about we get started here and I'll show you how to start off with that little branching pattern. So let's zoom in. And for this drawing, I think I'm just going to be using one of my brush tipped pens. Now my favorite to use for this kind of drawing is a Tombow pen. And because it is a brush tip pen, so let me show it to you right here. It is called the Fude Noske. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I really am trying my best. I, I do like this pen a lot because it really allows me to make some, uh, some thicker lines without having to switch back and forth between different pens. So this little scrap piece of paper that I have here isn't too big. So this will hopefully kind of reduce the amount of space that we have to draw in. So let me see if I can grab a ruler here real quick. And so I'm thinking that this is only about four inches by five inches, five and a quarter inches. So it, it isn't terribly big. So this at least helps us reduce the amount of space that we're working in. So how about we get started here by making a branch. So let's make a branch right here and we're going to bring that line up somewhere about right there. And then I'm going to let it open up to the right a little bit. So this looks pretty good. Then I'm going to make a branch right here and then maybe just let it split one more time right here. And then once it splits, those branches get just a little smaller. So this spot right here, I'm actually going to leave it just a little bit thicker. Just because I think it looks a little nice to have these areas that are wider, like a little bit more open. So I'm going to let it branch over here one more time. And of course, this is somewhere where you can really experiment, really try to figure out where it is that you're enjoying the branches. Where do you think they look nice? I'm going to put a branch down here. I'm going to start it at the bottom. And I'm going to put this branch behind the first one. I'm just going to make these little spaces here as the branch kind of splits. So here and maybe I'm going to let it carry through up here. And then bring it down over here. So I think I could add more. How about I just try to finish this one right here. Add this little little piece that comes up and actually I think I didn't even add line it up very well but you know what that's okay that's perfectly fine eventually once I come through and do more line work that'll kind of get lost in the shuffle so I just have these two main branches I'm not going to worry about adding too many more right now because I want to show you how to fill in those little spaces right there with all those nice little tendrils so I'm going to start with this space right here I think that's a nice nice size for a space it's not too large so I don't have to try to focus on a large area right now so I'm going to take my pen and really gently just take my time go around the edge of that space that I'm about to fill in so I'm going to make a dark line right here and again this is exactly why that Fude pen is just so excellent it makes me make it really helps me make those lines nice and thick without having to switch around with different pens. I just add a little more pressure. So you see here that what I'm doing is I'm just starting adding some nice little contours and they're going to be growing generally in the same direction that my branches were growing. So that's the direction I'm heading in. So I'm going to add these little lines and they're going to be fairly close together. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see better. 
And these lines are going to be right next to each other and they're just going to hug each other. So they're just these little, little lines. It's going to look almost like yarn, like hair. Some will be longer and some will be shorter. And you can experiment here with how you lay them on top of each other. Little ones, long ones, start them at different points. Let them hug each other in different curves, different ways. So as I get the, to the end here, I'm just going to fill it in. So there go. All my little lines are in there. But you can see it still doesn't quite look like this over here. I'm not there yet. So I'm going to come back in. I'm going to do one more thing to these lines to help it look the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start selecting some of these little tendrils and I'm going to fill them in with ink. So now it's nice and dark in there. And I'll generally kind of alternate. So I'll, I'll leave one alone, but I'll color in the next one. And occasionally I'll leave a few together. So here I'll pick this one and color it in. And how about this long one here? I'll color that one in. So I'm just filling it in with ink. And I think I want to leave these two. But I'm just going to thicken the line between them. Let's see how that works. So I'm just trying to make lots of little tendrils. They look like teeny tiny branches. And they're just kind of coming out. Growing in the same direction. So there's my first try right here. This looks alright. So we've got a couple of tendrils. A lot of dark lines around them. So it's starting to look a little more like these right here. So that looks pretty good. So I'm seeing right here, how about I pick another spot? Let's go with this one next to it. It's a little bigger. And then let's do it one more time so that we can really get just a tiny bit more practice in here. So I'm going to start by doing that nice dark line around the border of the space that I'm coloring in. So let me do that first. Just add that nice dark line. So once I have that set in, I'm going to start by making my nice little smooth lines. So I'm just going to start on the very edge here. So here's my first one. And I can just keep adding them in. And what I'm actually going to do is show you really quickly a slightly different method that I use for this that you might enjoy a little more than that first one. So the first one was just to color in spaces like this, but... What you can do is after you make a line, you can just make a thick line right after it. So just like this. So let's do it. Let's do this again. So here's the line and then a thick line. So here's the separation and then a thick line. And you can do this all in just one go. If you have a pen like this that can make thick lines, just go straight in for it. Just make a thick line. I'm just doing my best to keep those tendrils nice and smooth, trying to keep them some long, some short. Then I come in and do that thick line around it. So you notice this also has a similar effect. You may enjoy one, you may enjoy the other, so go ahead and try each one of those. It, it will be up to you which one you enjoy more. I think most of the time, at least from the way it feels right now, I think this is my preference, is to come in and just do a thick line right off, right off the get-go. So I'm going to come in here, and here's a nice long one, and now the thick line. So I'm trying to alternate their lengths. Here's one that's a little shorter, and I'm going to put that thick line. Notice I'm making sure that they have these nice long pointed ends. That's what makes them look so much better. So there's a long one trying to remember to add those thick lines in there. And I'm just going to fill in the rest of this space here. Some dark lines. And I'm just going to put a few more in just to fill that in right there. So there we go. We've got a handful of nice lines. Now it's really looking a lot like that drawing. It's really matching up. So what I want to do is I think I'm going to add some color in. So essentially it's like shading, but I'm going to be using a color pencil this time. So, because I know that in the original one, I really, really wanted to spend so much more time with it and I just never got around to it. So 
I'm going to get my color pencil. This is a Faber-Castell. It's a nice little violet. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add very gently some color to those little points. I'm going to let that color fade in really softly. So little violet points on the very edges. It's just a really soft touch. If you have any color pencils that are pastel colors, this might be really nice in here. Or you can just go straight in with those dark colors. So I'm going to add a little bit right here too. Right there. Now, just in those little tips, it's just a very soft touch of color. You'll notice that as, as you add more, it really starts giving it some character. And it's such a simple thing to do. It's very, very satisfying. Just a touch of color right in there. And it just gives it a little bit more depth, more dimension. So how about I add just a little color to that large branch that's in the front. What goes with violet? I'm thinking it's, how about we try some green? Let's see how those, those look together. So let me grab some green. This is, it looks like an olive green. I'm just going to add some here to the very edge of this branch. Maybe darken it a little bit on the edge and just carry it over. And I can try putting it over here as well. So I'm just letting the color act like it's some kind of shadow while the rest just stays white. So there you have it. There's just a little bit of coloring. I can keep adding it to the edges just to see what happens. It's a lot of fun doing this part. So this isn't all about the ink. Sometimes it's about adding color and just really, really seeing what you can do with those shapes, really helping them pop out really nicely. So here it is, just some simple coloring. Makes it look really interesting. So these are just some branches with some tendrils kind of growing outward really nicely. And so in my drawing, I think I might even go back to it and go in and do much more coloring on this just because I, I really felt like I could have spent so much more time on it. Really adding some color and some shading into the background and some of those, all those little spaces. It was just so satisfying. So I think I am going to come back to it and maybe add some more to it when I have some time because I really wanted to do that. So you can see I did it back in March. It's been quite a few months now, but it's just always been in the back of my mind. And so I'm really looking forward to that. As usual, please let me know if you try this pattern. Please let me know if you're having any difficulties with it or if this gives you any ideas for some new patterns to try, anything like that. I love to hear from you. I love reading your comments and your suggestions. If this gives you any good ideas, any new ideas, have fun. Have fun with this. That's what this is all about. Just taking a moment for yourself and just really relaxing. So thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope that you have an excellent day and an excellent weekend. And I will see you in the next one.